Well, welcome back to the next in our series looking through the book of Ecclesiastes. As Mr. Teacher has taken this journey through this book so far, he's been looking at life here under the sun, and his conclusion over and over again has been that life is meaningless. Um, he's pursued lots of different things. He's pursued pleasure. He's in, pursued wisdom. He's just looked at the rhythms of the world. And all of these things have left him at many times saying, meaningless. This too is meaningless. And we see this phrase come up just once in today's passage. Um, this too is meaningless. It's over there in verse 10. And this passage is focusing in on um, the topic of money and wealth. And it's a super, super relevant topic for us to be looking at together, as this is one of the biggest idols worshipped in our world, worshipped here under the sun. As we see, this phrase comes up a couple of times in this passage, and this is uh, Mr. Teacher's way of saying, this is, I've looked at the world here, I've observed um, life in this world, and here under the sun, things are pointless, meaningless, hevel, like chasing the wind. Um, as I said, this passage focuses in on the topic of money, or wealth, or income, um, riches. We see all of these types of terms coming up uh, throughout this passage. Um, wealth. Wealth and possessions down at the bottom here again. So this is kind of the, the topic in, in focus here. And Mr. Teacher wants us to see ultimately um, that the love of money, or the love of wealth, is meaningless. It is pointless. It will not satisfy you. And we see this in the world all around us. People are trying to find satisfaction in getting money or in the things that money can buy, but they never have enough. Uh, these verses could have been written into our world today. They ring true still for us today. And uh, Mr. Teacher observes the world. Now, we've seen from chapter 2 that he was a very rich man. He had gathered more treasures, uh, more slaves, more... Um, people to serve him and more women and all of these things. He had more riches than anyone else in the world before him, he says in chapter 2. And so when he says that the love, whoever loves money never has enough, whoever loves wealth is never satisfied, he knows we should listen to him. He's telling us what he's observed. Um, in verses 13 to 17, Twice we see this phrase that he's seen a grievous evil. A grievous evil. And what he sees in these uh, verses um, can be summarized from this little phrase here in verse 15. They take nothing from their toil that they can carry with their own hands. Uh, what he's observing in this section is that you're born with nothing, you're born naked, everyone comes naked from their mother's womb, and as they come, so they depart. So what he's wanting us to see is that if you spend your life trying to make money, trying to get more possessions, in the end you're going to leave it all behind. It will end up being pointless, meaningless, like chasing the wind which we see he toils for the wind, we notice in verse 16. Since they toil for the wind. And this first point, he's wanting us to see that, that money will not satisfy us. The love of money won't satisfy, because you always want more. Um, the second section, I think, the big focus, is that you can't take any of the things you have um, with you when you die, you will leave them all behind. But then he does something interesting in verses 18 to 20. So just to highlight here, I think the, the sections are 10, 12, 
13 to 17. And then here in 18 to 20, God shows up. Um, Mr. Teacher mentions God in three different, uh, in four places in these three verses. God has given them. God gives. It's a gift of God. And God keeps. So God shows up in these verses. And what Mr. Teacher wants us to see is that God makes all the difference. Um, there is good to be enjoyed in this world. Um, and what we see here, we see, we've seen this, it's like, it's another one of these, what we've called a carpe diem, seize the day passage. It is good, yeah? I've seen it's appropriate for a person to eat and drink and find satisfaction in their toilsome labor under the sun. During the few days of life, God has given them. So we see in verse 18, life itself is a gift from God. God has given life to people under the sun. Verse 19, God gives wealth and possessions. Anything that you have is a gift from the good giver, God. But God gives something else, very important here, the ability to enjoy these gifts. We have this ability to enjoy the things God gives us. We, we enjoy food. That's a good thing. We enjoy the things that we get in this world. We enjoy our homes. We enjoy um, presents. And that's a good thing. The enjoyment of these things is also a gift from God. Verse 20, people who enjoy the things that they are given, they seldom reflect on the days of their life because God keeps them occupied with gladness of heart. Um, the idea here is that God doesn't allow these people to, the, he doesn't allow the dark realities of our human existence, because life in this world is hard, but he doesn't allow those dark realities to overshadow the blessings that he has given in this world. And I think as we, focus in here God is the focus here and in the context of the whole of Ecclesiastes when we get to chapter 12 verse 13 here is the conclusion to the matter fear God fear God live with a right understanding of who God is and when we get that right we will enjoy life here under the sun as a gift from him this world this existence here under the sun is not the ultimate if we try to find our ultimate meaning in pleasure and wealth and possessions we're going to be left feeling dissatisfied and in the end we're going to leave it all behind but yet we can enjoy all these things but i think one of the big focuses here is that we shouldn't enjoy this blessings that we are given so much that we forget the good giver of those gifts. And that's a problem that so many in our world do. We, so many in our world, they're trying to find enjoyment in all the good things, but they forget the good gift giver. And I think as we dig into this, we need to think through how are we going to keep remembering to fear God, to focus on who He is and what He's done for us in Jesus. And if you jump right forward to the New Testament, um, Jesus came and he said in the Sermon on the Mount, you cannot serve both God and money. You can't serve money. You can't turn money into an idol, which so many in our world do. And Jesus knew that the, the idol, the sin of loving money and living for money was so bad that he was willing to die to pay the price that we deserve for our idolatry of money. And in Jesus, then, we find riches that are true riches. See, it's only riches that can deliver us from riches, as Paul Tripp says. Uh, only the heart-satisfying riches of the grace of Jesus can protect and free you from the deceptive, and dissatisfying riches of this fallen world. And when Paul writes to the Ephesians, in Ephesians 1, 
um, he, he goes on this whole long prayer. And as part of the prayer, he says, we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Every spiritual blessing. We are incredibly blessed. And on top of those spiritual blessings, God does give us earthly blessings to enjoy. But then Paul goes on in that prayer, so that we might be to the praise of his glory. All that God has given us should cause us to want to live for the praise of his glory, so that those around us might live for him. And so as you dig into this passage further, as you speak to those around you about this great idol, the love of money, um, I pray that you'll really enjoy digging into this, that it would really challenge the idols in your own heart. All of us struggle from this idolatry from time to time. And then pray that God would release you from this idolatry and see in him the greatest treasure that he's given us in Jesus. And then let's live for our Lord Jesus, wanting to use what we've given to make him known to the praise of his glory. So I pray that you'll have a great time digging in, read through this passage a few more times. Pray that God would use it to convict you first and then go and teach it to others. And pray that by his spirit he would stir hearts to move away from the idolatry of loving money and to trust in Jesus as the greatest treasure. God bless.